All right, welcome to the Ravid Show. We are here at Snowflake Summit and it's day three. So excited to have Matthew, CEO of Immuda and Murli, the global healthcare CTO for Snowflake. Uh, super excited to host you both today. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you, good to be here. Awesome. Uh, just for our audience, would you like to quickly introduce yourself? But uh, for them, I want to let, you, let them know that we'll be talking a lot about data security, healthcare, AI impacts, and much more. Matthew, just a little about what's happening at uh, Immuta. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so yeah, I'm Matt, I'm from, uh, CEO of Immuta. Uh, you know, what we're seeing is, is uh, obviously, you know, day three here at Snowflake, everything's about AI. Right. Uh, it continues to be the topic trend, and for us, the same thing. Uh, you know, what's happened with us is, is we're looking at different verticals of how they're going to leverage Cortex, how what we believe enterprises are going to be adopting RAGs right. to build these native AI apps. And so, you know, we're continuing to see that trend to where, you know, we believe there's just such a nice, easy integration to build these apps, so we're kind of excited about that. But um, yeah, it's, uh, but we're here to talk about healthcare and security too, so it'll be good to have a conversation about it. That's awesome. Murli. Yeah, glad to be here. Uh, my name is Murli Gandhirajan, Global Healthcare, uh, CTO of Snowflake. Um, super excited to be here along with Matt, um, CEO of Immuta. Uh, this conference has been uh, very exciting for us, so we are so looking forward to it. Uh, um, you know, there's a lot of exciting product announcements. Um, you know, again, AI is definitely the center stage, but uh, um, it's not just AI. It's about the new capabilities to do data engineering in a you know faster, uh, you know, cheaper, better. Uh, and also about uh, the uh, data security and uh, um, in a, in a uh, field where I am from in healthcare, data security governance is super important and it's a highly regulated industry and uh, glad to be here talking about the uh, you know healthcare and data security governance, AI and all in a box. Love it. Uh, quickly, uh, I'm going to jump right into it. So how has the use of data in HLS evolved over the past few years? Are there certain HLS areas that you are seeing as uh, a focus for companies like example genomics, medical, uh, devices, manufacturers, etc. Yeah, I mean, so uh, healthcare is such a broad category, right? right? There's providers, there's insurance companies like payers, there's life sciences. Uh, what we're seeing is actually is a, a huge transformation in life sciences. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, and the reason is, is they want to streamline the whole middleman, right? They want access to as much data as possible, yeah. you know, right from the patient, right? And yeah. so the the most important thing we're seeing is how do pharmaceuticals post a COVID world deliver whether it's a, a medicine or whether it's some sort of uh, care through a device, mm -hmm. but how do I leverage data to get that out to the world faster? And so they want to use cloud to do that. They want to have a right. direct like feed back and forth between um, them and the patient. And so that's changing how you do clinical trials, how you do drug discovery, how we do post delivery of medicine uh, for business consumption. So the whole industry is changing away from these database structures to everything being shared in the cloud. So it's disrupting the whole injury, industry and it's a lot of fun. It's We're seeing uh, some really great use cases. We're in that interesting time for sure. Uh, yeah, can't yeah. Wait. Uh, Murli, what are your thoughts about it? Yeah, I'll uh, expand on top of what Matt was talking about. Definitely uh, payer provider life sciences across the board, the industry is definitely uh, getting reshaped. Um, what is basically uh, is in the rise is the uh, ability to leverage multimodal data topics that resides within payer provider and life sciences. What we are talking about is beyond the patient's uh, demographic data, climb data, encounter data, which are traditionally structured in nature. Right. And uh, right now we are talking about interoperability data formats such as FHIR, JSON, which is XML, JSON formats. They are semi-structured. Mm -hmm. But what is more exciting is our ability to leverage the unstructured data topics like genomics, complex medical images, uh, pathology reports, pathology images, and uh, uh, the uh, you know the chemical uh, molecular data and so on and so forth um, but if we have to uh, look at the what happened the last 10 uh, uh, 10 years or so is the um, rise of our ability to do complex computing right there is significant advancements in the uh, computing infrastructure including GPUs and what that is enabling uh, our the healthcare organizations to do is um, do a lot of these unstructured data processing at scale that we have never seen before mm -hmm. and uh, what that means is it's a huge opportunity to tap into all of these multimodal data topics to truly build the, uh, the, the health outcomes needed for patients but when we do that, we also have to do it in a secure, governed way. I, I think right. that's where between Snowflake and Immuta, we have a huge role to play in this space. 
True, and uh, those are fantastic insights. Thanks for sharing that, Murli. Also, since we are in this topic, I'm kind of also curious to know a little about the AI impact on HLS companies. What do you think about that? Uh, uh, I know data security kind of plays huge role in it. So, kind of curious to know a little more. Yeah, let me start. Uh, yeah. AI, see, AI's impact is across the board uh, when it comes to the uh, functions, business functions across the value chain of payer provider life sciences. Um, its impact is both broad as well as deep. Um, you know, AI helps in uh, increasing operational efficiencies to delivering health outcomes, ability to accelerate drug development, right? right. Uh, and, and the impact is across the board. The way I'd like to put this is uh, the um, specifically the generative AI components, the large language models and the capabilities associated with that that is, it can assist, it can augment, or it can accelerate, right? Mm. Uh, it can assist in terms of providing superior patient experiences, um, it can uh, you know, help in reducing documentation burdens. Uh, from a life sciences perspective, it can accelerate research, drug development, right? Uh, the complex protein folding uh, and the structured predictions and the capabilities like that. Um, and it can also augment the clinical decision-making process. People who are in the business of serving patients, it can really come up with insights that truly augments uh, the decision-making process. Love it. No. Yeah, just to expound on that just slightly, because uh, it's 100% correct. I think the, the big thing also is it allows us to do wide essay studies, right? So what mm -hmm. we can do is, is aggregate a lot of patient data, and we can uh, what, what AI is going to allow us to do is, is while sustaining privacy, we'll be able to take a, a much broader look at trends uh, relative to patients and those outcomes. Right. And so that's where, like I said, in genomics, I think there's going to be huge advancements because AI is going to be able to look at certain, uh, whether it's recessive alleles or certain types of like, um, SNPs where we see patterns that we wouldn't have been able to do. We didn't have to compute, um, and nor do we have the human power to really understand yeah. that. So I think that's one area. The second area, though, is I think we're we're on a Gen AI kick, and I love it. Um, and because I, I think it's going to make it easier for uh, more junior employees to ask questions. Right. However, machine learning and tuning is still absolutely necessary in this domain. Yes. And again, um, being able to throw GPUs at this, the ability to compute this at a massive scale is going to allow us to do like medical imaging and take it like radiology to the next level. It's going to allow patients to be able to get uh, faster. Imagine in diabetes, right? Like so direct to consumer, like say uh, a Medtronic, right? That's delivering these devices to consumers. They're going to get much faster telemetry back on what's mm -hmm. going on with that patient. So that's kind of the world I see with AI is, uh, faster interaction with those consumers, those patients that you will. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Thanks for sharing that, Matt. Also quickly wanting to learn a little about when we talk about AI, obviously data security, uh, you know, obviously the regulatory compliances kind of play a very important role there as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of curious to know about the concerns around AI and data usage when it comes to regulatory compliance. Yeah, I mean, so when you when you get into AI, right, the biggest thing is this, someone's going to have unfettered access, right? So in generative AI, exactly. the, the end user is a consumer and they don't necessarily understand. Their expectation is, I could just use this thing, I'm gonna ask questions, and then I'm gonna get <laughs> exactly. results, right? Totally. Um, and, and, and in many cases, you know, the way I kind of, the example I give is, um, let's say the, the hallucination, right? I ask a question, how hot is it in Phoenix? And mm -hmm. if the answer is 200 degrees Fahrenheit, I kind of know <laughs> it's wrong, right? <laughs> but but if, if the question I'm asking is, is like, hey, uh, take a look at, do we see any, uh, let's just say it's like whole genome of a tumor, ha has, have, has any of these tumors manipulated this way, changed this way? And it says, well, actually two of these base pairs may have changed and that's completely wrong, but the end user may not know any of that. True. Right, so, so when we talk about security, privacy, those are things we can control at the data layer. That's what's really fantastic, the way Cortex was developed, is um, companies like us are able to insert and control that data and determine what's going in there. And that also gives, uh, because Cortex is referencing native snowflake tables, it's all right. kind of like built, ready to go. You can also build test harnesses for hallucination management, but that's going to be a whole new field. Your, your domain experts in the business are going to, there's going to have to be a lot of data product managers to manage all this, mm -hmm. which is a new yep. concept that didn't really exist before. So companies like Roche and Thomson Reuters and all this, they're all going to be, they're going to be adopting data product managers to like protect from hallucinations. So that's a huge change, right? Oh. Um, but, Murli? Yeah. Yeah, I'll uh, extend on top of uh, what Matt was talking about. 
um, see, there is, uh, you know, you have a model and you really want to deploy the model for inference and you really need to secure the data. And Matt beautifully talked about how, you know, uh, you, you can integrate easily with Cortex from a data governance perspective. Uh, but uh, I want to, uh, you know, kind of get down to one more level, right? So, yeah. you know, you have the foundational models and you want to leverage the out-of-the-box models for inference. But there are many situations where organizations want to fine-tune a foundational model, right? Uh, there's going to be a lot more of data governance related things that we need to consider when doing so, right. uh, one of the important things is when you ha take a fina uh, foundational model and uh, you uh, you know you take a zero shot at the model, it's not uh, really performing well for your use case. So you wanted to really fine tune the model, meaning you are taking a zero shot at the uh, well, like a few shots at the model. When you do so, you are actually um, more in most of the cases. Um, using your proprietary data to fine tune the model because you want that responses to be very specific. Exactly. In that case, when you get the model, the fine tuned model, it ha it cannot be a foundational model. It has to be a, an offshoot of that model, which is deployed within the secure governance boundaries of a health life sciences organization's um, boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, exactly. one of the things we do from a Snowflake perspective is when we when we have the customers fine tune a model, the model then gets instantiated into their own Snowflake account within the database schema boundaries, which is super critical. So then you know uh, the capabilities like Immuda then can layer in the, the right access control policies on top of that, right? Yeah. So that's an important consideration too. Thanks for sharing those insights, Murli. Also, since uh, we have. Uh, the CEO and uh, Snowflake team here, uh, like Immuta and Snowflake team here, I'm kind of curious to know a little about uh, the use cases for the HLS customers that you all jointly serve as well. Would you like to share something around that? Sure. Uh, Matt? Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, we have some fantastic use cases. Um, right. So where we're seeing huge push right now is actually, first and foremost, it's a bit of a surprise, but in healthcare, uh, we see a lot of HR analytics to start. So when we typically go into an HLS uh, company, it doesn't matter if they're a payer or life sciences, well, we actually a lot of times start as an HR, right. um, is because they actually want to know who are their best people. They're in a fight for talent, right? So exactly. the, the engineers are needed everywhere, right? Um, but then we actually, we get pulled into a lot of personalized medicine, so real world data efforts. They're trying to aggregate EHR data, clinical trial data, right. uh, for secondary tertiary analysis. And so um, we get pulled into that, and where they want to do is apply privacy at scale. Right, so they want to click who can view what aspects of the data and they want no performance degradation. What's really special about our relationship, and it started in, believe it or not, our first integration with Snowflake was in 2018, which feels like forever ago in this world, right? Yeah, um, exactly. But uh, Snowflake was actually the one that forced us to change how we integrate. And so we do that natively. So we actually, we're, we work within their query planner. And why I'm bringing this up in a healthcare mm -hmm. use case is, the volume of data you have to aggregate and analyze is vast and there can't be any performance degradation. So what I would say to you is, is where we get pulled in together is how do we apply like GXP principles, mm -hmm. right? So like these best practices to one, secure the data, make it discoverable, make it repeatable when they run analytics against it, auditable, and then guarantee that there's, it's not necessarily about privacy, but it's about, uh, especially in clinical trial management, it's, um, you know, which persona can see what aspects of the data to protect the study. Um, so those are our most common use cases, and we have like public customers like Roche, where we've we've scaled them significantly over the past couple of years, yeah. uh, and it's fantastic to watch. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to keep it going, you know? It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, the, the use cases it really cuts across all the business functions. Uh, I nice. think what is most exciting uh, is, is um, you know, I touched upon the uh, multimodal health data, right? Mm -hmm. um, our ability to layer in data governance policies and the access controls around that, um, that's an exciting use case. Um, that's been on the rise because, you know, up until Gen AI's capability, uh, extracting knowledge or information from them is a very cumbersome, lengthy process. Um, now we are looking at uh, citizen data scientists who are, you know, wanting access to that data and <laughs> want to generate quick insights, and what that means is we got to layer in right level of data governance. So, uh, again, um, Matt touched upon, you know, pretty much most of the business use cases that we deal with. Um, I think uh, the, the use cases is, is across the business value chain again. These are fantastic insights. Um, uh, one last question actually for both of you is around the Snowflake Summit. Mm -hmm. So how has it been so far for uh, you both and uh, how are you seeing the developments in the data security space? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well first, uh, the event's been fantastic. I mean, uh, what I will say is uh, 
the Snowflake exec team always does a really good job of getting, what I try to say is it's not the amount of the number of conversations I have with people, it's just having the right conversations, right? Cool. Uh, and so, you know, I, what I've really enjoyed here is there's a lot of uh, business IT here um, where they're not trying to solve a full enterprise problem, they're trying to solve real business problems that are, that are impacting their business daily. So I've thoroughly enjoyed that and I've literally, for better or worse, I've been in meetings <laughs> nonstop for two days from 8 a.m. to midnight. Uh, so it's, imagine, it's right? good, it's good. Um, but, and then what, I, what, I'm, what I'm seeing from Snowflake, and I, I, what I, and I really like what I'm seeing is a stack that's easy for all technical disciplines, meaning um, someone who is a very junior in an organization that just writes SQL to a very advanced engineer, there are services being exposed that makes that experience easy, pleasant, um, and enterprise ready. Yes. And so that's what we're really excited about because we just sell to big guys for the most part. And, you know, so they need simplicity because to get to production cool. is hard. So that I'm seeing that consistent theme of everything being released. So it's been a really great event and uh, I'm excited to continue the partnership and hopefully it, uh, next year will be even better, you know? Yes. Absolutely, uh, Matt couldn't agree more on that last point you made. Uh, in terms of uh, you know what's exciting, uh, you know it's definitely the ecosystem. Like like Matt, have you talked about? Um, it's the ecosystem of uh, your customers, and uh, what excites me more in a, in a event like this is uh, we really take this opportunity to connect our payer provider licenses customers. Because at the end of the day, we can uh, have interactions with the payer customer, a provider customer, a license customer. There is a lot more value when we bring this ecosystem together because mm. in this industry, they all collaborate and collaborate very closely, right? Um, so excited about the ecosystem. And then in terms of uh, the features, uh, you know, the technology capabilities, um, there are a lot of interesting AI use cases. I am absolutely thrilled and excited about those capabilities. Um, I'm also equally excited about the differential privacy policy that we have just you know, announced in a preview capacity. Um, I, I think that's a, that has got a huge role to play in the, um, in the clinical research space. I'm super excited about features like that. I'm super excited about Snowpark container services going uh, GA and uh, also having Snowpark container services um, available to be packaged as a Snowflake native app. I think that's going to be truly transformative for organizations who truly want to build the packaged use cases and then want to distribute, monetize, uh, you know, or share with other fellow researchers um, in a not-for-profit capacity. So you know, the opportunities are endless here. We love it. We love the partnership between Immuta and Snowflake. And uh, it helps us in the data security space, in the healthcare space, obviously, to get to the next level. So this is awesome. One last question for sure. And that's about if people want to reach out to both of you, where can they do it? Is LinkedIn a best place? And where can they learn more about the content that is being produced? Yeah, link, uh, LinkedIn, absolutely. Um, and then, uh, you know, um, uh, our website is a great uh, you yeah. know, source of information, of course. Um, but yeah, if you uh, want to reach out, please reach out in LinkedIn. Uh, Murli Gandhirajan, uh, you can look it up. Uh, Matt? Yeah, same thing, LinkedIn. I don't think I'm going to throw my email out there. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so definitely LinkedIn. I'm happy to engage with anyone. I, I love this space. And those who want to get quite technical, I love, right. you know, getting deeper into some of the use cases. So happy to do that. And, and also, actually, we... Not only is our, our website really great content, but we actually have, uh, as of Monday, launched a page specifically on integrating into Cortex uh, nice. and Horizon with Snowflake and some of the best practices we're seeing on how you should leverage that, how you should apply security principles, how you should apply privacy principles for regulatory oversight. So uh, we've even taken a step further to, to make this you know, relationship that uh, easy. Love it. Thank yeah. you so much, Matt, uh, Murli, for doing this and uh, taking the time out and being on the Robert Show. It was such a pleasure hosting you both. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you for having us. Yeah. Thank you, everyone.